Welcome into Tennessee Titans today. I am Tom Downey here to break down all the latest news and some rumors out there around the Tennessee Titans. We begin, though, with the clear and obvious news things, namely some practice squad moves for Tennessee. Three players signed. Jordan Roos, the longtime guard in the NFL. Zach McLeod, who will be a developmental piece at edge rusher. And perhaps most notably, because he plays quarterback, Kevin Hogan, the former Stanford Brown career journeyman, is joining the Tennessee Titans practice squad only. So there are some spots available there for Tennessee. Hogan comes on. And I think the initial thought was, whoa, this means something for, for Malik Willis or Ryan Tannehill. I think it's more to do with the fact that Logan Woodside has gone and joined Arthur Smith on the Falcons roster because Marcus Mariota apparently uh, doesn't feel like playing, got knee surgery, which was kind of weird there. I think it's just extra Tannehill insurance. Not like not that you don't trust Malik Willis, even though he wasn't great as a pure passer, not that he's ready anyway. But you always want to have at least three quarterbacks in your organization, uh, whether it's active roster or practice squad. I think it's your Logan Woodside low-end replacement. But speaking of Malik Willis, let's check in on the pulse here. What is your confidence level right now in Malik Willis? Scale this for me from 1 to 10. 1 is on the low end. 10 on the high end. Sound off for me in the comment section. Now, if I ask you your confidence in Todd Downing, uh, to be clear, different names, although I'm pretty sure at one point the ESPN broadcast, broadcast crew called him Todd Downing and not, or Tom Downing and not Todd Downing, but the confidence in the OC probably at an all-time low, which I think is fair. More and more calls every day. We see it in the comment section, social media, wherever to dump downing, which flows oh so well. The offense is 26th in the NFL this year in points per game, which is 18.5. And that's just one of many stats that can be used to reflect the fact that the offense is just not very good. Let's hit some nerd numbers here, right? Which, eh, you know, maybe some in the NFL don't like, but it's valuable to condense it all across all 32 NFL teams. So DVOA is, uh, it adjusts for the defense and level of competition. That you face. So, you know, if you play a bunch of bad football teams, then, you know, your stats might look better. EPA per play does not adjust, but it just factors in how impactful the individual plays are. I actually kind of like quite a bit of the stat. Uh, but a common theme here, right? 22nd in total DVOA, 23rd in EPA per play, just overall offenses. So, again, you're near bottom 10 there. You're 15th in pass DVOA, 19th in pass EPA per play, 20th in rushing, and 26th in uh, rush EPA per play. And there's some volume stuff Tennessee's benefited from on, on the ground, but the offense isn't that good. And I think it's very fair to want to fire Todd Downing. But what do you guys think? Be the interim GM slash head coach or owner, I guess, whoever wants to make the call. FD for fire Downing, again, ing, not E, like my last name. Or KD for keep downing. It's the pinned comment on today's video. So if the ad break comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know. The Titans made a bit of a, a surprise move timing-wise to dump John Robinson. With the argument that was laid out from ownership of, I, I, they knew that they were going to dump him, so why wait? And I get that to an extent. As unusual as it is to fire, and frankly unheard of it is to fire a GM who extended in the offseason and fire him less than a a year into his extension and do it midseason when you're a playoff team. It's unusual. So if that's the argument for dumping Robinson, why wait to dump Todd Downing? It's not working. They're, they are winless since he had his DUI, which alone might have been an argument to dump him since it came after a game, which is a whole different conversation there. Passing game coordinator Tim Kelly, who has some higher level experience coordination-wise with the Houston Texans, not a great example I know, but he, call, he could call your plays. The offense doesn't work right now. You, you, you've used your tight ends in shockingly weird fashion. The offense is bad. I know Mike Vrabel's finding ways to win you games, helping you win games as head coach, but I am all for, simply put, dumping Todd Downing. Now, to be clear, it's not just Downing's fault. We'll break down one player that I do think needs to be swapped out as well, but first, today's show is brought to you by Fetch. Fetch is super easy to use, and it's a free app lets you earn rewards on literally anything you buy. You can scan any physical receipt or e-receipt, like the emails you get, right? And you'll earn points for your purchases. The process takes only seconds. You don't have to worry about where the receipt is from, what's on it. It's super easy, as you can see right here in this nice little video. All you do is open up the Fetch app, 
press the orange camera button, and snap a photo of your receipt. Hit submit, and you'll see the confetti pop showing that you've earned reward points. It's a very simple process. You also click, click the e-receipt function to get rewarded for your Amazon purchases or any online shopping by syncing your email account. You can then redeem those points for gift cards at Amazon, Starbucks, or any of the hundreds of retailers and restaurants that are available through the Fetch app. It's available on iPhone and Android. Use our link, chatsports.com slash fetch, and it's a promo code chat, that's C-H-A-T, at sign up for 5,000 bonus points when you scan your first receipt. That is the equivalent of a free $5 gift card to get started. It's a free app. But the 5,000 bonus points only last for a limited time. So don't delay. Go get it today. Links in the comment section and the description. It's chatsports.com slash fetch. Promo code fetch. Let's talk about one player. Uh, I would like to see bench. Then we'll get to Todd McShay's mock draft for Tennessee. Dennis Daly. And I don't want to be too mean here because NFL player is a hard job. He sucked, though. I'm sorry. Dennis Daly, to be blunt, has been horrible. For Tennessee, this has been, I would argue, the worst offensive lineman who starts in the entire NFL. He has 11 sacks so far this season, eight hits, 21 hurries, four penalties, and a rather brutal PFF run grade of 51.7. We're up at 40 pressures already this year. That is, I believe, second most in the entire NFL. Look, at some level, sacks are a quarterback stat. I get that, but when you have 11. It ain't just your quarterback there. That is the league-leading amount of sacks. 11 is the most in the entire NFL this year. Not the most snaps. Far from it. It's tied for the most sacks allowed already since 2019. You got to try something else. In the end, this becomes the definition of insanity. If you keep trying the same things with Dennis Daly, knowing he's going to give up a sack almost per game, and you're like, it's the shock Pikachu face, right, of, well, he's been bad. Doesn't change. You can't keep doing the same thing. LaRaven Clark has played 16 snaps. I don't think Clark is a is a magical cure-all answer. There's probably not one at this point in mid to late December. But you got to try something else. Let's give LaRaven Clark a shot. Can't be that much worse. I know Dylan Raidens might as well be a bust at this point because he can't get on the field and he hasn't been good at guard, but he was a tackle at North Dakota State. Give him a shot. It, if it doesn't work, okay. At least you tried. Doing the same thing and expecting a different result is not fair to your offense. And that falls on, on Vrabel. It falls on Todd Downing. Whoever's making that call on the old line coach too. Because you got to try something else. So pick a replacement. Because I, I can't see Dennis Dilly out there again and expect, ah, this will be the bounce back game. He's never been good. Even with Carolina. He's just not good. I'm sorry. So pick one. LC for the Raven Clark. DR for Dylan Raidens. I'd probably go Raidens first and fingers crossed my second rounder figures something out. But expectations low. But come on, let's try something else out here. Now our goal is 5,200 subs by Sunday's game. Not that hard. We're 46 away. Make sure you guys are subscribed for free videos all season and off season long right here on Titans Today. Mentioned the offseason, right? We'll do plenty of draft coverage here, especially if you've been sub for a long time. You know that. Uh, Todd, Todd, Todd McShay releasing his latest 2023 NFL mock draft. He's going at 1.0. He's in like three this year, so whatever. Uh, but he's got the Titans drafting Ohio State wide receiver Jackson Smith and Jigba. And I'm old enough to having done this show before for over a year now. I don't know to remember how many times we or the fan base or other outlets mocked a receiver to Tennessee in round one last year before they dr traded away A.J. Brown and swapped him in for Traylon Burks, which again is not a really good move. Now, Kyle Phillips might be a piece for you at slot receiver. I don't trust Robert Woods. I'm fine to have interest in wide receiver. Here was the argument from Todd McShay. Only the Bears and Ravens have fewer receiving yards or wide receiver receiving yards this season than the Titans with 1,330. I think Justin Jefferson has more than that already this year. And rookie first-rounder Traylon Burks has just 25 catches, hasn't stayed healthy. I'll get back to that point in a moment. Worst Tennessee has watched A.J. Brown dominate Philly, blah, blah, blah. The O-line and edge rush spot should be addressed too, but receiver has to be fixed. 
Smith and Jigba's five catch, 43 yard season. That's it. Might be concerning, but the hamstring injury limited in 2022 should not impact his rookie year. And he's only one year removed for more than 1,600 receiving yards and nine touchdowns while fighting for targets alongside Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson. This guy's a smooth route runner with good acceleration and soft hands. He'd be a prime target for Tannehill and Willis or Willis out of the slot. Agree with a lot of that there. Uh, I'm in on Traylon Burks still. Again, it's 25 catches, but he was banged up, and he showed plenty of big playability. I think he's going to be a key piece for you. I and, and Jigba had a great year in 2021. I think we all we all remember the bowl game. Admittedly, Utah was not playing its top corners a little bit there, but he balled out. Uh, 1,600 yards this season, 95 yards. He outproduced Wilson and Alave, and those guys were those guys look awesome in the NFL right now. So that's all fair. And I think in late round one, I have interest. The concerns are beyond the injury notes for Njigba. How does he fit in with your offense? I keep looking, and this is just me personally, at this Titans wide receiver room. Where right now, they're, they're leaning heavily on Traylon Burks, Robert Woods, Nick Westbrook-Akina. And NWI, he's a four. All right? Or maybe a three if you want to run the ball a lot or have a great tight end, whatever. Uh, Kyle Phillips is a slot only, who maybe is a piece for you. Traylon Burks is one keeper. And I think he's kind of best in that in a very similar role of AJ Brown. The one thing I think this offense is really lacking right now, especially for the way Malik Willis wants to play and being outside a attacker and not going middle of the field, where is your speed at? Where is your vertical threat? You don't really have one. I don't think on this roster. I'm not considering NWI in that category, and that's not Jackson Smith and Jigba's game. Honestly, even though I'd probably say JSN's a better prospect, I'd argue Jalen Hyatt, the Tennessee Volunteer, might be a better fit for what you don't have right now in that wide receiver room because he can go downfield in a hurry. Also, there's this point, too, and there weren't many linemen on the board when this point of the mock draft, so it's fine. And we mentioned Dennis Daly. He ain't your only problem up front. Uh, hey, look, this is what happens when you miss on two premium picks and Dylan Raines and I Isaiah Wilson and your other guys get old. Your offensive line needs help. If you can find a good lineman at almost any spot, you got to at least consider it if you're Tennessee. I know it's early, but should the Titans draft a wide receiver in the first round? Why for yes and for no? Get those early comments in for me right now.